A box rests on a frictionless table and is pushed by two people. One pushes with a force of F1 equals 10 newtons at an angle of 30 degrees below the horizontal. If she stops pushing, what will be the acceleration of the box? Since this is asking about acceleration and telling us forces, we probably need Newton's second law here, which relates the net force to um, the mass and the acceleration of the box. F2 here was not specified in the text. We see that it's 60 degrees below horizontal and to the left. We don't know its magnitude. Since this is resting on a table, we know that it's not going to be moving up or down, so there's a normal force from the table that's going to be pushing up to counteract the y components of forces F1 and F2, whatever that's necessary. So what we're really caring about is what the force is in the horizontal direction. I've set up some axes here, plus y in the vertical up direction and plus x in the horizontal to the right direction, which is pretty conventional, but there's no reason that we have to do it that way. It just works out um, in a large number of cases. It might not have been the best, most convenient choice of axes for this particular problem, but it'll work. So what we're going to try to find is the x component of F2. Why just F2? Well, we know that in the initial case, when it's static, when it's resting on the table, F1 and F2 are both pushing on the box. And that's keeping things still. So F2 has to have the same component pushing left as F1 has pushing right, because those are the only forces that have any components in the x direction. When we remove force F1, then F2 is all that's going to be left. It's going to be the net force on the box, or at least F2 in the x direction is going to be the net force on the box. And that's what we need to find the box's acceleration. So first, write down everything we know. F1 is 10 newtons, theta1 is 30 degrees, theta2 is 60 degrees, defined as shown. We've got our Newton's second law here written out as a vector equation that the net force is zero, which is F1 plus F2 plus the normal force N. What we're looking for, acceleration, is really the net force um, after F1 is removed. And that's going to be F2 in the x direction. And we're going to divide that by the mass to give us the acceleration. I've written down more stuff here than we need to solve just this problem, to answer just this question. We could answer all sorts of other questions about this scenario. I've written down Newton's second law equations for both the x and y directions. Um, the component of the net force is zero in both directions because the net force is zero. So it's got x and y components of zero. Now we can set up what we know from the geometry of the situation. F1 in the x direction is just F1 cosine theta 1. F1 in the y direction is minus F1 theta 1, sine theta 1. Why minus? Because this is down. And then F2, same kind of thing, um, minus F1 cosine theta 2. Why is this minus, whereas F1 was positive? This one's minus because force 2 is pushing to the left and down whereas force 1 was pushing to the right, which was the positive direction. F2 in the y direction is also negative because it's pushing down, which is the negative y direction. The normal force has no component, zero component, in the x direction because it's purely a vertical force the way we've set up our axes. And so all of its magnitude is in the y direction. What we're concerned with here is the x. Let's see if we can get that. All that we really want is F2 sub x. What I've done is solved the Newton's second law equation for F2 sub x by subtracting away F1 sub x and N sub x from both sides. That's what we get here. And we've got everything we need. N sub x we know is zero. F1 sub x, well, that's just F1 cosine theta 1. We've got numbers for those. That's 10 Newtons cosine 30 degrees. Don't forget the negative sign. To give us minus 8.7 Newtons is the net force acting on the box, and it's in the negative x direction. Well, I should say 8.7 newtons in the negative x direction. We're not done because what the problem really asked us for was the acceleration. So now we need to divide this net force by the mass to give us the acceleration, which will be minus 1.7 meters per second squared.